Hey guys, Matt here uh, with another Jio conversation. Good, uh, good noon to you. It is actually afternoon, two thirty-nine. I'm sitting at the Cultural Plaza. There's this really, really beautiful area here. It's got a little stairwell that goes up into the flowers, and they and they change the flowers here every uh, season. Really, really beautiful purple flowers. Holy moly! They are very, very nice, and uh, they they change them all the time. And uh, actually, I bring my daughter up here. She scurries up and down the, these stairs. She really enjoys it. This is the t sort of place. I, I know that you guys have um, commented on a few of my videos. Said, "Where is all the people? Where is everybody?" Well, this part of Ningbo is first of all pretty new, so you're not going to get like uh, the sort of downtown crowd that you'd normally get. This is a, a cultural plaza area. Everybody's working right now, so we're during working hours. So as soon as uh, the clock uh, strikes, uh, time to go home then this place will fill up quite a bit. We've got like a interesting little observatory here. There's a science center that is quite nice. You'll get authors that'll come in from out of town and they will do speeches. Actually, um, um, I forget the name of the guy. I'll put it in the description, but there's a an artist that makes, uh, is a Japanese artist that makes these kids' stories, but they're about a dinosaur, a T-Rex, Tyrannosaurus Rex. And uh, Eva really, really likes them. And he actually did a uh, exposition near here and Eva got to meet him and and uh, draw some pictures with the uh, actual artist who was Japanese very very uh, and I think anybody that writes children's books is probably going to be a very uh, unique and fun personality and, and he did not disappoint for that so we are getting close to the uh, time that we're going to pick an American president and uh, I've had a few people asking me if I voted and so I thought maybe this would be a good chance for me to uh, talk about how I voted and what the process was, because uh, voting from China is maybe different, but uh, it is sort of probably more common than uh, than not through this election. I think with the uh, coronavirus uh, and the pandemic and all of the lockdowns and the changes to lifestyle, um, I think more people are voting the same way I did. Um, and so I don't think I voted as unusually. So I think that maybe this video will be um, interesting for people. Hopefully you've already done it because we're running out of time. <laughs> so um, if you haven't already, I think there's still a little bit of time left to do absentee ballots. Um, but uh, obviously if you're closer in the city that you live, uh, that you can vote in, then, then it'll be okay. So what was the process? Let me tell you the process. Um, it was pretty easy. I uh, I live in, or my family lives in uh, St. Clair Shores, Michigan, which is a suburb of Detroit in Southeast Michigan. Michigan has a, a pretty good system for absentee ballots. And uh, this is not my first time voting absentee from China. Um, I, I have voted obviously in America, even if I wanted to go home, which if, if, if life was working out well, maybe I would have found a way to get home and vote uh, vote in person, but but I just simply can't. Um, uh, if I leave China at this point in time, it'll be very difficult for me to get back. And life here is very normal. The uh, coronavirus is under complete control, and life uh, for for the people living in China right now is very very comfortable, if not normal. Which is it's funny to say normal is great because <laughs> normally we're always striving for, you know, the push the limits. But but in this point, just normal is is uh, is something to really really appreciate. Anyways, I contacted my city hall to make sure that the same um, system was set up last year for this year, and they said yes. They sent me an email back, and the email correspondence with my city hall, St. Clair Shores City Hall. Now, St. Clair Shores is a suburb. It's small, not too small, but China small. <laughs> China is like insignificant. This city I live in is sort of a still a first tier city, but it's not one of the biggest cities, and it's got nine million people. So <laughs> sizes are, are are an interesting thing when you live in China. But but my city of St. Clair Shores is not that big, and um. So I was able to correspond with my city hall pretty easily, um, asked them if I was still on the absentee list, and they said yes. Coincidentally, shortly thereafter, I received an email with uh, my ballot application, um, and it sent me a PDF. So I got my ballot application uh, on September the 2nd. 
Um, and so I uh, received the application and I sent, uh, it was very simple. It was basically fill in where you're from and why you're voting absentee and, and everything. And so I filled that out uh, digitally as a, as a PDF. And then I emailed it to my city hall representative um, at that point in time, they received the information from me via email and then emailed me back a ballot. Uh, this, this was an official ballot. This was the ballot that you'll see if you go to the uh, voting box, at least in Sinclair Shores. It was sent back to me two weeks later, which is why I'm saying that you guys, if you haven't voted absentee and you plan to, I don't know if there's enough time left for that. Because uh, at this point in time, I sent the application on September 2nd, it came, and I received the ballot uh, on September 18th. So there was 16 days between the time I said, hey, you can, guys can send me a ballot. I'm same place, same whatever. And then by the time they actually sent it to me and I got it was the 18th. And then I filled out all of the, uh, uh, you know, all of the people. And I tried to do research as much as I could on judicial nominees and, you know, uh, you know, there's a lot of things. If you guys aren't American or don't vote this way, there's a lot of votes. There's different judicial nominees. There's education departments. And then there's obviously the presidential. And I'll let you know who I voted for at the end. I don't think that's a very big surprise. I'm looking for the future of humanity here. So <laughs> I think it's important. But uh, anyways, you, I think it's a let's all vote. Whatever your vote is, let's all vote. I think it's, 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 it's a good thing to do. So I, I sent my ballot on the 18th of September, and then they received it and marked it off on September 28th. So it was almost uh, a 26 day process that it took from the time that um, I received the application to the time that they were able to mark it in. And like I said, I had this done a long time ago. So September 28th, um, I was logged in, all good, and ready to go. Um, obviously, there's the envelope in an envelope thing where you get your ballot, you fold it, you put it in an envelope, you mark this is a ballot, absentee ballot. You put the envelope into another envelope, which is your FedEx or whatever. I used FedEx. I wanted to make sure that uh, when my vote was sent, that it is, I could track it, that I could see it, and that when... Uh, when City Hall actually sent, like City Hall actually in St. Clair Shores marks all of this information, election date, application received, ballot sent, and ballot received. So they are a very, that's a very, very calming thing to know that, because because especially these days, everybody's worried about their ballot being lost and, and geez, I wonder if it's going to be marked down. I wonder if I'm just going to be some statistic that does, does, doesn't get counted. And uh, at least in St. Clair Shores, you done good, guys. So um, you have actually been uh, uh, very forthright on on tracking. And uh, so I had the FedEx tracking the actual ballot in transit. And then I had Sinclair Shores that was telling me that my ballot was received and ready to go. So um, at the time, I, I'm not exactly sure how Sinclair Shores does it, whether they, they've received the ballot, but I don't think they open it and count it, obviously, until the election day. In that case, they, they have a... I am very... <laughs> This is going to be a very interesting election, eh, guys? I mean, this is going to be something from the from the antagonisms, from the accusations, from the concerns, and from all the people worrying on both sides that this is like such an important election. Um, I read an article in CNET, actually, that was the most current article I could find, and it said, over 40 million people already voted by mail. Americans have been voting early this year ahead of the 2020 elections with more than 61.2 million votes already, and nearly 41 million of those being mail-in vote. 20 million people have already voted in person wherever they could if there was early voting in person, but 41, I'm one of, I'm one of 40 mil, 41 million Americans around this world that have uh, done their part to try to uh, choose whoever they think should win. So um, I hope that you do your part, um, and I hope that we can kind of, uh, I don't know, I, I surprise, surprise, it's not Donald Trump. <laughs> surprise, surprise, it's Joe Biden. Unfortunately, there was a, there's a funny video that's out by... Um, 
like a news show. It's a funny news show. It's not a funny, but it's like it's a humor. It's a humorous take on politics and and stuff. We don't like Biden, but vote for him anyway because it's kind of like you're gonna go someone you don't like or someone that's I think you think is truly dangerous to the to the future of democracy in America. Whether you think the democracy is lost completely already, I, I would rather not see the the boulder being pushed farther down that road. I would rather see us find some stasis of like we can fight from from Biden. Like Biden, we can actually start. We can continue the battle, but. Um, I have a feeling all is lost to a certain extent with uh, with the continuation of of Trumpism. So, I mean, I, I it's just my belief, guys. So you might disagree. I know a lot of you disagree. Some some of you guys are my good friends, and we have one of you. Well, I don't, I don't think you watch my videos, but uh, one of you was astonished. Like he actually wrote me, and he said. I didn't realize you were so far down. Like you were so uh, 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 brainwashed. And that was because I was saying the only sensible option is to move on from Trumpism and try to find some some comfortable common ground that we can kind of move forward from. And then he was saying that Trumpism is the only hope in the laptop, Matt. And, you know, it was just one after the other of all of these conspiracy theories. And he looked at me and said, Matt, I didn't realize how far away you were from the common sense of Trumpism. It's amazing that, uh, I don't know, there's so many different thoughts and, and, and minds in this world. And I do try to put myself in the shoes of a Trump voter. And uh, Donald Trump's just a horrible dude. He is just a, he is just, he, he, he has, he has nothing respectable for me to vote for. So do your part. I I, I actually do understand some of the uh, feelings from Trump voters feeling like the world is, it needs a radical shift and hello. And uh, that, uh, you know, some people just want to crumble it down. Some people are racists. You know, there's a lot of those people out there more than I had thought. I've, I've actually grown quite disappointed at the realization of how many people out there are just bigoted and uh i am not saying all trump voters are bigoted but a hell of a lot of bigots are trump voters that's all i'm saying they're very comfortable there they're stand by stand 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 back stand by stand down stand by just wait a little bit till 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 the election if i lose so I'm I'm actually really concerned of, of, of that as well because I uh, I do believe, and we'll put a little thumb on this. Trump's going to get smashed. I think the only way to get through this and move on to the other side is to smash Trump, smash him, and show the world that there are some sensible Americans, and then show America that we're not as far down the rabbit hole as we had once thought. Um, we can do it, guys. You know, if we vote in large enough numbers and, and we rebute the last chaotic four years, um, maybe we can show that that uh, the foundation of America is still there and that uh, that we don't have to tear it all down. That's another thing that I think uh, is is frustrating for me because people keep saying, you know, America is too far gone. We need to just burn it all down. And then build from the ashes. Well, there's a few things wrong with that. First, there's no guarantee if we burn it all down that we will be able to build something better from the ashes. There's stories upon stories of societies that once they crumbled, they never got back up again. All the way back to Rome. And then you've got even current stories like, like Middle East countries have, have crumbled. And there's just no way to rescue them out. I, I, of course, time heals all wounds. But... How much time do we want to invest in in breaking down America to its base base components in hopes that we can build it up? The way that I see it, now, I've traveled a lot. I've been around the world. I've seen a lot of different countries with a lot of different systems. I live in China. This system is very interesting. Um, I don't like to judge and say good or bad. There's some good points and there's some bad points, just like there's good points and bad points in, in all countries. The society here in China, most people here are actually quite happy. You might might not realize that from the things Pompeo says and whatnot. Oh, we're going to rescue the Chinese people. The Chinese people are pretty damn happy 
from a large, large majority. And that's not communism talking or some sort of crazy authoritarian strong arm thing. I think if you ask most Chinese people, they're pretty happy with the situation that's been dealt and the cards that they've had for the last 10 or so years, maybe even more. But um, I've traveled a lot of different countries and I have seen unstable countries and I've seen very stable countries. I've seen stable countries embroiled in chaos and I've seen Countries that are coasting along a beautiful, like Vietnam is co right now, is coasting on a beautiful road to 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 uh, modernization and and I see Vietnam really really a beautiful country, a lot lot going on, um, a lot of possibilities. Obviously, COVID has hit everybody, you know, uh, and and so we're, every country is going through this in their own way. But w to get back to America. The idea that America is so faulty that it requires a phoenix moment, like burn it down and a phoenix will rise out of the ashes, I think is really, really stretching. I don't know, I don't know where this comes from. I, I realize that there's people that feel disenfranchised. There's people that feel frustrated. But she, it all boils down to money and politics, guiding policies that aren't not popular, and a lack of voting installing people that we don't appreciate into power. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but if you have a good moral compass, you have a strong mind, you have good ideas, run for office. And then tell your stories to people who will vote for you. And the system of democracy can be reformed and rescued, not burned down, guided. Because America and governments in general are not like a speedboat that can turn on a dime. They're like freighters. You know, freighters take time to move and, and adjust. And, I mean, uh, for those of you that know me, you know that I was a big fan of Bernie Sanders and his policies. And the uh, just the sheer fact, and I, I was really frustrated with how he was dealt uh, in this whole election thing, but I also appreciate the fact that Bernie Sanders almost got on the ticket. I mean, he almost, he, he got farther as a democratic socialist than the last five presidencies. So that's a good thing, guys. That's a win. That's a step forward. That is that freighter slowly turning, an indication that that freighter is slowly turning towards policies. I'm sorry, guys, if you think that all of these socialistic things are are, are unpopular. They're not. Like, most people want Medicare for all, and that's not even as socialist as you could get it. You know what I mean? Most people think that our industrial military complex is overfunded, and some of that funds should be moved to other places. Most people realize that our educational system in America is total dog shit and needs to be reformed. Most people do. You wouldn't realize that from what's going on in America and the policies that are enacted, because the minority is pushing money to politics in order to control the majority. So you get these minority that are saying, we want to make money, we want force, you know, it, like even environmental laws. You see like these, these things so counter to what we think we want as, as most Americans are not happening because the minority is funding policies that affect the majority and they're profiting from it as a minority. Just look at the, the tax tax bill that uh, Trump passed. It, it really benefited a lot of middle, middle class for a little while, but it benefited the 1% a lot more forever. I mean, as far as the writing of the bill was, your, your middle class tax cuts will, will uh, expire, but the higher end tax cuts for the 1% under the existing law would, would last in infinitum. So the idea here is that we all vote, but we also find out what people are doing that we like and what people are doing that we don't like and vote based on those things. Not popularity contests, not how good looking somebody is, not at how, you know, some guy is attacking the libs like, oh, he's attacking the people I don't like, so I like him. No, 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 no. What is you, what is substantive? What do you want the future of America to be? What do you want the future of the country to be? And then start steering that ship. 
you don't want to shoot a missile at the ship and destroy it. All that's going to do is cause, listen, I mean, because that's basically what you're saying is you kind of, kind of want civil war. You want to break down America into its base components and build something new. You ever try to make a cake and turn it into eggs and flour again? It's going to be messy, folks. It's going to be messy. Hello. How are you? What are you guys doing? Niemand sagt gar nicht Huh? Yeah, ship him. What should you get YouTube? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Niemand? Nio, you got Jim, Uma? Yeah. Uh-uh. Can you Yeah, can you? Yeah. All right, guys, we're going to come in, come in, come in. Say hi to my, my show. Nika Ikan, what is Jemu? Ni hao. Gasa Tama ni de Jemu. I'm I'm from China, Ningbo. It's okay. Hello. Hello. Were you in the window? No, no, no. You guys weren't in the window. Say hello. Hey. Hi, hi. hi. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys. Give me a jayo. Say jayo. Yi arsa. Jayo. Okay. Jayo, guys. I'll see you later. Vote. Do your part. We can get through this as Americans. Bye-bye.